Some of these invasive species, when they are introduced, they overrun the native species. For example, we are talking of pine. It was introduced with a good intention, but it later ended up colonizing the native trees at the Chambe Basin. The bracken fern has been uh, uh, around, I think, for so many years. But then, I think you, uh, they have been neglected. That's why they have um, reached this far to colonize a lot of pasture land for animals. The invasive species are plants, animals and the pathogens that are not native to an ecosystem and may cause an economic or environmental harm to the environment. Sometimes they may also adversely affect human health. These invasive species include plants like Lantana kamala, Estethonia devesphoria, Telidium aquilinum, and then why these ones are being called invasive is because they outcompete other plant species in ecosystem. And if these species are not controlled, they may lead to loss of the existing natural resources that are there in the forest. So we need to make sure that these ones do not repress the natural resources that were already available in an ecosystem. Mulanje Mountain is one of the target sites. Mulanje Mountain is a world-class tourist attraction site which has unique species. These species are under threat because of fallen uh, species, other, otherwise known as invasive species. Some are alien and some are native. We are going up on the mountain to check how these fallen species are affecting the natural ecosystem. Mulanje Mountain Forest Reserve uh, uh, covers an area of uh, 60,000 hectares. And then in this forest reserve, we have uh, different plant and tree species. We're talking of about over 100 different plant species that exist uh, on the mountain. The mountain is also unique in the sense that uh, there are over 50 species that are only found on the mountain, uh, four of which are tree species and the, one of the tree species is the, the famous Widringtonia white, the Mulanje cedar, which is only found on Mulanje mountain in the whole world. So what we're saying is if we, the invasive species were not to be controlled on the mountain, they may affect the population of uh, these other plant species that already exist there, including the Mulanje cedar. We are here on the mountain on Chambe Basin, where a number of invasive alien species have colonized most of the areas. Some of these species include Pinus spatula, which is commonly known as pine. Even in the local areas, it's also known as pine. We also have Rubus eripticus, which is Himalayan raspberry, and in the local areas, it's known as Kandakuku. We have uh, uh, Teridium aquilinum, uh, which is uh, black and fern, and locally known as uh, Tambala. These species have an impact on the native species that are found around here. Where they grow, it is relatively rare to see the native species also growing. They are only them growing without another native species growing in those areas. It is important to manage these invasive alien species because if we don't, we are going to lose most of the native species and the unique species that are only found on Mulanje Mountain will be gone if we don't take any action. 
The measures that have been put in place as a district, we have arranged sensitization meetings with the communities to make sure that they are aware of the activities that are going to be done under the project. That is so because the activities are going to be implemented in the customary land where uh, it will involve disturbing of uh, some uh, environmental areas like uh, slopes, like uh, gardens and uh, even uh, river banks. So when we are doing that, there will be issues that will emerge, social and environmental. Social such as uh, maybe other people will have to have their uh, crops that are in form of alien species removed and we we'll have to discuss with them on how they can uh, find alternatives of such crops. Uh, going forward with this program, we might be removing some of the vegetation and uh, that will need to be replaced and that has to be uh, done in consultation with the uh, communities. Midengu <laughs> Matumba Fowlo, Sapa Guna Guru, which is a Tumbayani, Tumbari Mosifakuna Guru is in his Mesa Bera Mundazija, Zuma Taka from Munda Jambi. Sanka wife, eh? Why, ne? They never sank one, Yudi Jikosa Guchoga. The true men at Guchoga. Chuga Meneo, the Opia. Eh? At a Guchoga Mene. Gana Fukuso. If you got Jingono Mono Yima Kunza Gumera, Utu Yukumbeva, but you are to pay your Gome Yoba, Komagutu Temasu, Uzapas Yadan. Yabuka. Or Ujo, we are so to Maguachi to Timacumba, but a great fabric, Timacum, or Uyen Calubrusi. Agajipa, you may have a good and a navo. Amajosa, Yoipa, what was him a buyer? The cause of photos on a good day, Pineo, Dofunigira, or the Akos of Kalam Piramul and Jepas was in Gapo. Most about the Pine Union or the Sadi of Funigira, Kalam Piramul and Faber, the Pine Union or Anzala, Kama Bereka Zipaso, Kabinan Tanga. Diagagua pants, amapeza udia mabanga sikata, dono dama mera uchulu kwa kwambi. Masa ba alipa inuwe nondo kazala, ntengo mozi, umabeleka ntengo mo, denu mata kukukolola, denu uzazala so wina. These are species which ev e they are evading grasslands, areas where we are supposed to have grasslands that are being taken over by this type of trees. So you have black wattle, you have black and fen, you have pinus spatula which is a very big challenge when it comes to wildlife management in here. So now, uh, the coming of the project, uh, we are very happy uh, that there is this project, which basically it's going to give us the opportunity, the platform to determine, to come up with possible methods that we should use to do away with these species, which are taking the large part of the grassland that is supposed to be used by the grazers in this park. The impact is huge because uh, these places is where you expect maybe animal sighting to be very good. Mm -hmm. But uh, instead, the animals they get displaced because they can't move even within these strands of uh, pines, even in cross fields of uh, bracket fen. Thereby, it has an impact on the pressure of the as well because they don't see what they expected to see. The project which uh, uh, we are currently implementing, the Invasive Area Species Management Project, uh, is looking at uh, the possibility of uh, managing uh, 
the, these invasive alien species. We are looking at a combination of uh, treatments. Of course, uh, we are on trial basis. We have taken samples, uh, soil samples. We'll be looking at uh, even the physical removal of uh, these uh, invasive species. And uh, also in certain cases, we'll be looking at which chemicals uh, may be applied if necessary to remove these invasive species. We want to identify the type of species which are found in this quadrant. Uh, so we are recording both the scientific name for the species which are found so that later on we can uh, do the data analysis to find how diverse uh, the species are in these quadrants before we start removing the invasive species. My land is about eight hectares, but then Malau has covered almost three quarters of my land. So it's a big challenge to me because uh, it's covering almost every land that the, that the plants are. It's expensive in terms of working because you have to tell your labors to approve now and then it's very expensive. If you put one acre, it will cost you about 15 thousand. So I don't know where there's another way of treating those Malaro so that they can not grow, but it's a problem. We need to have a national agenda to, to tackle them, regardless of where they are, inside national parks or outside national parks. This is a threat that costs a lot of money to remove before it causes real damage. So we need to be very clear, you know, at national level, what we define as a plant we don't want on the landscape because it causes problems. And there are many of them, but we need to prioritize the ones that are a serious danger so that the threat to us is, uh, goes. So that leadership through a policy document, through an action plan for, for uh, working around so that everybody knows what a problem is. Here in Melangi, we want the tier states to be involved. We want the smallholders to be involved. So we need to have clear relationships between the scientists, between the policymakers, the people on the ground, as to what you, each one's role is and where we have a problem that we work together to understand it. Not that conflict, because people have different interests, is allowed to prevail and then we're not making progress or, or going backwards.